Photographers are like yoga instructors. They wear tights to work. A lot of them, they bend in ways you wouldn't expect if you saw them in real life. And they get paid very little money. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I'd refuse. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we have five desperate losers to help with immaculate advice. We have the Canon R8, 85mm 1.2 ridiculous amounts of donut and we're gonna switch to the black magic voigtlander 58 mil 1.4 to see something for some reason and your questions are on a phone today with a stand look at this level of preparation i'm using a canon m50 i'm interested in using leica and other 3d pop lenses too bad those don't fit like your underwear most likely Tempt me with, can you recommend a adapter and a lens to start with for indoor vlog, indoor vlogging. That's not what it's called. Unless you're going to like walk the length of your house back and forth. And ooh, I'm in this room now. Nobody's stand tuned for that. 50 mil 1.8. Oh God, it's ghetto, man. Viltrox speed booster. Those are the worst kinds. They don't work. Oh man, you're pleased with it. So why are you looking for elsewhere? You're happy with what you have. Why are you seeking? It's human nature. I'm with you. So here's the deal. Look no further than your Canon EF counterparts of yonder year. You already have everything in existence, probably cheaper used in your market somewhere. You're looking, I don't know if your Viltrox speed booster is Canon EF to EFM, probably. So you're already like most of the way there. Now you just need either. You could go 24 mil 1.4. It's not the most dramatic 3D pop you ever seen in your life, but it's okay. It's a decent lens, not the super sharpest, but whatever. That'll be boosted to some type of focal length. I don't know what you're operating with. 35 mil 1.4. Now you're looking at something amazing. You're like, getting closer to something respectable. It's much sharper than the 24 mil. It's almost a Mark II. They made that after the first one and it's like, it's much better. You could, in theory, go 50 mil 1.2. I'm just tossing it. I'm not expecting you to catch that one, but, or you go to the glory hood, 85 mil 1.2. Zebras. I thought Canon made a speed booster, but it's EF to RF, man. I forgot, you're in the M mount. What were you thinking? Oh, even Canon abandoned that. They abandoned you. That's what they thought of you. Oh, thanks for your money. We're leaving. Next bus. You're not coming? Good. So just look for old EF lenses. You'll be fine. Love how my screensaver just turns off every time. Uh, no problem there. Love how tiny these words are. I enjoy your content. The way you talk and your sense of humor is infectious. I want to ask if you're shouting interviews indoors, you could only have one Insta360 Ace Pro, DJI Action 4, GoPro Hero 12. Which would you choose? We'll be using a cell phone as well to get a second angle. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going to cut. That's going to cut great. I'm going to love the, my cell phone's at uh, 31 random frames per second and my footage is at 30p. It shouldn't matter. It will. Your phone sucks. What phone do you have? I'll buy it. It's not a Huawei. Never mind. Cancelled the offer. Huh? Hi, is this available? I don't even care. I'm leaving. I'll be here all night. That's why. Why are you picking an action cam for indoor, the worst and low light possible, ultra wide cam to super unflatter your guest? I would maybe go with the Insta360 because you could zoom. They have a zoom crop or an 8K or something. But like, God, the skin tones on that one. I would go DJI Action 4. That's the best for indoor videos, interviews. Can't you just step up to like a Canon R10? Could you must up the energy for an R50? Would somebody like throw an R100 at least at you if you begged outside of a liquor store? Like move into something respectable. Interviews on an action cam indoors.
good luck with that. With window lighting, too? Is that what your plan is? With clouds bouncing off a brick wall like me? Don't do it. I have a serious question, because you use Topaz AI a lot. Using Topaz AI, is it better to film at 1080p 120 and upscale to 4K, or film at 4K 60 and interpolate to 120 frames? I'm glad you asked, because I just did a little example in here. So what you're witnessing right now, side by side, one was filmed in 4K 120p, and then upscaled to 240 frames per second and the other was filmed in HD 240 frames per second and upscaled resolution wise to 4k so now they're both 4k 240p which one looks better to you I don't even know the results yet because it's gonna take me hours to render it and of course I ignored your terrible specs of 4k 60 and HD 120 I don't know what year this comment was written in uh, about a hundred years ago, so I did you the favor of shooting on an A7S III. And there we have that. In my opinion, from experience, something's always going to go wrong if you try to increase your frame rates. The movement, man. Some little feather action if it's a bird. You're going to see something odd in this warpy. Like, how important is this footage to you? Because, like, if it's wildlife, pretty much forget slowing it down. Unless it's already at 240 frames, you might stand a chance at getting it to 480. But, like, if it's just a human being running across the street, even the hand movements, that can be tricky. So, it's always pretty much better to upscale the resolution. Shoot in as many frames per second as you possibly can, and then get the higher resolution later on if you even need it. Which, do you really? Depends what it, if it's professional work. I think I would go the 240 frames per second of the A7S III that you just bought through my affiliate link and then up-res that. I think Philip Bloom would agree, would he not? Alright, let's switch to the Blackmagic OG. With the Voigtlander lens, you might compete with full frame or just get destroyed immediately. Let us switch. <laughs> Voigtlander has just destroyed full frame. I do believe that we are superior. Better color science, more dynamic range, potentially. 3D pop. On par, if not defeated. Oh boy, what a great purchase that was. Thank you so much, Angry Photographer. This is the best lens ever made. I just stopped it down to one on my speed booster. I have no idea what that actually means in real life, but it was at zero. It's a weird thing, man. Terrible system they invented, but it works if you get by. Hey, I could actually have that out of the shot. He's so professional. What are your thoughts on Nikon Z8 for video? If you look at the sales brochure, you see Nikon's pushing it as a video camera, also records raw internally like a RED, and after Nikon won the court with them, I'm not a video guy per se. On paper, yes, the brochure looks nice. Nikon, if you're behind the camera, it's like, wow, this has everything I'd ever need. 8K60 raw, who's doing that? Canon, actually, but not really. Nikon, I imagine, is better with easier to edit files. This is what the biggest question for me is in a Nikon camera. Are those files easy to edit? Can you tell me? Because Canon is hard and it's really annoying. Whereas Sony, same specs, easier to edit, just better codecs. That is a question that lingers in my heart. Nikon, behind the camera, yes. Viewfinder, animal eye detect, 4K 120p, HD nothing. That's where you fall off a cliff. It's like, if you can't destroy my A7S III, why are you even in this conversation? I'm not looking at you. I'm not the type to sidestep into a camera that's as good in some areas and then worse in others. You gained a bit here in resolution, lost in the fun, and where's the flippy screen? Where's my versatility? I can't actually see myself, so like I can't use it for everything. If you want just a wildlife cam, Z8, might be tough to beat that thing. You can beat it though, with an A7S III. Piece of shit. Nikon has the most potential to overtake the video industry, but so far they haven't done it yet. 
they have the raw that's amazing sounding on paper some amazing specs in there almost sony level but like sony's probably gonna come out with something soon that even debunks all that stuff so i don't know it's cool but like as a youtube scrub can't even see yourself how are you gonna laugh in your mirror you can't all right last question here i've recently started blogging on my youtube channel so you're writing articles that's fantastic i'll subscribe my channel's primarily music tutorial thing purchased a dji pocket 3 and action 4 love them both but since been vlogging outdoors coming across wildlife in australia could you recommend a cheap point and shoot with decent 8k 4k footage why'd you tell me all the other stuff what did that have to do with anything shameless plug that's all it was i see through your lies p.s love you so you want a little point and shoot you're obviously not willing to spend anything more than like 40 dollars the best thing you could get is that little sony xh99 i've reviewed it i can't see anyone beating that for the size i don't know how much it costs I bought mine used, I forget how much it even was, like three something, well, too much, too much, closer to 400 maybe, maybe over 400, I forget, but it was too much and it's probably out of your budget, but that's like the low end of what is even acceptable, or the Canon SX740 is okay, but it's going to have worse autofocus, better colors, worse image, worse everything, Sony XH99 is the best. But you'd know that if you watched my review of it, you wouldn't be asking. You'd know that that was the best thing that you could afford. But you're, you're skipping the line around, oh, this in video interests me. I'm not going to watch this one, though. You watch them all. You watch them all. Wildlife filmography. This is the best. Oh, no. Oh. So I'm leaving now. Who won the battle? Little Blackmagic OG with two megapixels, or did the Canon full frame even come close to competing? It would be sharper if I stopped it down. Now we're at two. Not even a measurement known by science. But it was at one, now we're two, now it's three. It's not Tony three, it could be anything. Nobody knows, but sharp, isn't it? But now black brown, not as blurry. Tony losing its power. Now we're at four. Can't even imagine how sharp this is. Too sharp, and the light is too bright now. It's annoying me. I have to keep adjusting. And look at all the background stuff. You're now with your wall of misery. We're at five now. I feel like the focus keeps shifting further away from me as I stop it down. And the color, I completely forgot. What a dumb... Every time I change the tonies, the frickin' white balance goes crazy. Crazy magenta to green shifts. Shit, I should have had that out the whole time. I realized I wasn't turning the light up bright enough either to keep up with the Tonys closing down. And we're at max now. It's 100% small rig power. And shit. All right, we're at the last Tony 7. And I've just compensated with a tube light. I'll go. Not after you subscribe for more videos, I'll say that.